All right, this was sent into the channel uh, for a review. This is uh, from the company Kai Wheats. I've reviewed quite a few of their products. Um, this is another thermal camera. So uh, I reviewed um, this uh, thermal camera from Kai Wheats, and I really enjoy this one. I keep it out all the time. It's a nice big screen, has good resolution, um, and uh, I keep that pretty handy because it's, uh, although I also like the ones that attach to cell phones, they take some setup time. You have to plug them in and, and uh, uh, that one I just grab and go. Uh, so this one is similar. I think it has pretty much the same sensor in it. Um, but let's, let's open it up. It comes in a, a nice presentation, one of these fancy boxes. I like these things. Uh, and so we have on a uh, uh, this side we have a charger and a cable. Uh, we have some documents here uh, on how to use the camera. And then the camera comes in one of these nice cases. I do enjoy these cases. Uh, these little zippered things. Uh, and the camera has a little Velcro hold down. That's kind of nice. I haven't seen that before. Anyway, here's the camera. So let's, let's rearrange things and I'll show you this thing. So the first thing is that it's not like any other thermal camera I've seen. Uh, it's not the big pistol grip thing. It looks like a digital camera, right? Got a big display on the back. It's a large camera. It says pocket size. I did check it out to make sure it really was pocket size because it seemed a bit big to me, but yes, it, it does fit in the pocket. Um, it uh, is re reminiscent of an old camera from maybe the, 2000s because it's so big uh, but for a thermal camera I guess it's small uh, compared to the big pistol grip ones right so it has uh, some interesting features it has a regular camera it has a thermal camera but it has a uh, laser range finder and I think that is a, a valuable for certain people uh, maybe not us guys at the at the bench here but if you're doing thermal loading of architectures and things like that you need to do square footage and things and this camera will measure all of that stuff something i'm not interested in but i'm sure that it will be a selling point for this thing so let's uh let's push the button here so most thermal cameras have a pretty long wake up time because they have to do calibrations um to, to remove any, uh, any problems. So that's not too bad. That's fairly quick as far as thermal cameras is, is concerned. And you can see there we're, we're imaging. All right. Um, so uh, first and foremost, it has a shutter button, just like you would have on a uh, camera. It has a, a USB-C port on the bottom for charging uh, the batteries. And also, I believe, for, for the transmission. It also has Wi-Fi, so you could hook this up. I believe they have a web service, a, a cloud service, which I'm not going to do, um, to upload your pictures and stuff. Um, there are two function buttons, F1 and F2. And then this is a touch screen, okay? So let's zoom it down here a bit. All right, so if I hit the screen, we get a, a menu, a menu here. Uh, we have a gallery of photos that I've taken, a local gallery. So here's some pictures that I've taken. Um, all right. It's IR, IR, so you can have infrared only, you can have a visible, visible only. You can have picture in picture where it's visible with an inset of uh, thermal, and then you can have uh, mixed. So you get, uh, let's see if I can zoom up here a bit. So you can have both a, uh, thermal and, and uh, visible uh, uh, on top of one another. All right. So let's go back down again. All right. Uh, we have image analysis, a, a spot, uh, and uh, full screen area. I think this is where the, uh, the IR, I mean, the um, laser rangefinder is good because then this will be 
actual image in uh, the square will be actual square footage and things like that. Um, there's a palette, all the normal uh, white hot, black hot, you know, all those all those types of things. I like the uh, the red here. Uh, and then we have uh, I don't know what those are. <laughs> And then settings. Okay, so different calibration things, save JPEGs, uh, resolution of the visible light, either 640 by 480 or 5 megapixel, uh, laser ranging, uh, brightness of the screen, temperature, emissivity, atmospheric temperature. So for all the calibration reasons, you need to know what's going on to have good, good data. All right. So that's what that was. Let's see if I can turn this thing off here. Uh, delete all analysis objects. Yes. All right. Um, something at least we can see what I'm doing here. All right. Uh, I don't know what the focus range is on this thing, but it looks pretty good. Uh, let me uh, hook something up and get it hot. Um, but let's talk about the F buttons. F1, I have set to uh, change the palette, so you can have uh, different different. Uh, oh no, this one is visible only, or um, overlaid things like that. All right, and then this one down here. I got those backwards, didn't I? So this is visible only. Picture in picture, mixed, and then image only. And then this one is, yeah, this one is the uh, color palette. So different color palettes. White hot, black hot. And then uh, this is the one that I like. So we'll stay with that one. I think it's called iron, something like that. Um, and then you have to push the button, takes a picture, image saved. Looks like it took two images, both the, the uh, visible and the infrared. Um, yeah, looks pretty nice. All right, here's a little RF generator. We'll just uh, see what's going on. There you go. You can see some things are already starting to heat up. Let me back this thing out a little bit here. So, yeah, that's working pretty good. How close can we get for it to be blurry? Yeah, that's pretty blurry. That's not too bad. Six inches away, maybe, is uh, still within an okay range. Now, uh, if, if uh, Kaiwitz is listening, uh, some future advancements in, in, in uh, thermal imaging would be um, add autofocus, add using the range finder for your autofocus. Um, yeah, those would, be, those would be cool features. Um, cause a lot of the use cases for people like me is to get very, very close. We want to get really, really close. Some companies sell a little attachment lens that you can put in front of the camera. Um, but it'd be really nice to have some type of autofocus or different, different zoom or different focus settings, you know, and maybe three different focus settings or something if you can't do the auto zoom stuff. But uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be nice for us folks. Now, what this does have, which uh, I'm not too crazy about, but maybe some people would enjoy it. It does have a uh, digital zoom, so I can I can do this and I can zoom zoom in on an object. And that's just doing pixel interpolation, so it's not an optical zoom. It's just a digital zoom. So for me, I'm going to always just take recordings all the time of images with full full field and then if I want to zoom in I'll just do that in Photoshop right I'll just do that someplace else but if you really do really do like that you can do it but you can see the pixel pixel density will, will be just terrible so uh, and then if I can get back out here yeah there we go okay I didn't mention it is um, 256 by 192 resolution, so that's kind of the high end these days. Um, and uh, I'll leave you here with some uh, some pictures. I'll take some pictures and uh, and uh, put them here, 
And uh, I think this thing is going for about $500 now, uh, so it's not, uh, not inexpensive, but it, I do like the form factor for all of those people who hate that big, uh, the big form factors. Uh, I can imagine you can just throw this in a coat pocket very easily and uh, take it around with you. So, All right, uh, here's a picture of the bench with the uh, little RF generator going. Here's a picture of the uh, ceiling in the garage and uh, the heating of the slats. You can see that. And here's a few pictures of Imsi Dog. Okay, that was my review of the Kaiwitz KTI-K01, a new product of theirs. And uh, uh, one thing that I don't like about it is it won't take videos, um, but uh, most people don't care about IR videos, I think. But other than that, uh, it's okay.